Firstly, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, my name is Matthew Arnold. I'm the community manager at Checked. And today we are joined with um, partner program manager, Xi Route from Agoric. And how are you doing, uh, Xi? Are you doing well? Yeah, you know, thanks again for having us. No problem. I'm glad you're here. We also should have behind the Stargears logo there, we should have Shane Vitorana, co founder at Stargears. Are you there, Shane? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Thanks for having me. And uh, Ruan is behind the Stargaze logo, and uh, I'm behind uh, this. Uh, 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 okay, character. just double. Uh, hi, Ruan. Great, no problem. Thanks. Um, we also have Greg Osuri, who unfortunately, as we've now found out, appears to be having. Hi, ah, you're there now, Greg. You're now a speaker. How are you? After a few restarts, I'm okay, it looks like. Thank you, Ruan. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you're finally here. So for those that don't know, um, Greg is the CEO and founder at Akash Network. Um, and then, of course, we've got Frizz Redwoods, our CEO at Checked and co-founder. And the first question for you guys is what are the key changes within Cosmos you've recently identified and what is your strategy to overcome them or play them to your advantage? Jeet, would you like to take that one? Uh, sure, yeah. More than happy to start. Um, you know, definitely since uh, Agoric, uh, and uh, for quick intro, uh, my name is Jeet Rout. Um, I am the partner programs manager at Agoric. Agoric is a layer one uh, built on Cosmos. And uh, what we really focused on is using uh, our hardened JavaScript, a uh, more secure version of JavaScript for smart contracts. And uh, I think, yeah, for us, something we think about a lot is uh, since we became, uh, you know, inner blockchain communication enabled, IBC enabled, uh, within Cosmos, what are the different ways that we can work uh, with different chains um, in thinking about both like making our assets? Um, so we have a two token model. We have BLD build, uh, which is a governance token, and we have ISD inner stable token, uh, which is uh, our stable token, which we use to pay for gas. So right now, just figuring out different ways to, for us to get IBC or sorry, um, IST on a bunch of different uh, platforms, uh, you know, both like DEXs, uh, order books, uh, perpetrating platforms, just thinking about different ways for us to get our assets uh, everywhere in Cosmos. Hello? Oh, Matt, if you're, uh, if you're talking, you're on mute. Okay, in the, while waiting for Matt, I'll... Uh... I'll step into the silence and keep going. Um, so, hi all, Fraser. We're um, we're building uh, a self-sovereign ID layer one again on Cosmos, um, and SSI or self-sovereign ID is basically the idea that individuals should have control of their data um, and be able to kind of port that around as as they need to. Um, and I guess following up to uh, to Jude's part, like. Um, one thing, so we upgraded recently to like 46.8, so that happened last week. Um, so we got ourselves onto almost the latest version. I think 47 has just been rolled out. But for us, interchain accounts um, is the obvious one. Like being able to use functionality from other networks just via IBC is extremely powerful in the same way that like anyone can go and deploy, um, anyone can go and deploy did schemas, cred defs on our network um, without necessarily having to like route via like or go onto our directly onto our network but i think the other bit that's going to be major for us is like it's less so that we're getting it from the sdk and more that we're just getting it from eco ecosystem wide tooling so like we're looking uh working with like the other smart contracting platforms where that's like agoric or juno or possibly doing it with like fmos or canto um ignoring kind of all the all the controversy there um so yeah i'd say like cosmos sdk itself um like i'd say interchain accounts definitely but i think more for us it's it's more the ecosystem play of like what can we work with to build to get through our roadmap quicker and enable payments for self-sovereign id versus like having to build everything ourselves and uh hopefully i've given enough time for matt to recover his audio and uh, kick on to the to the others yeah, thanks, Fraser. What happened was actually, Jeet, you, it just went silent, and I thought it was just my phone because my screen went black, and it did this last time where, unfortunately, it muted everybody. But I don't know how that happened, but are you still there? I don't know if maybe perhaps you'd like to um, 
sort of pick up with your introduction and then we can kind of maybe move on to Greg. It would just be a shame for you to start your pitch there and then we kind of lost you. I wasn't sure if it was just me. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, I think we all heard him, Matt. It was, I think it was just you. Was it just me? Gee, oh, it, right, okay. If there's any, anything you want to add, go for it. Uh, nope, I'm, I'm good for now. Like, go ahead, thanks. All right, I wasn't sure like to say thanks anyway. Sorry, anyway, uh, Greg, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you are doing um, over at Akash? Sure, my name is Greg. Uh, it's a correction, I'm not the CEO of Akash. I'm the CEO of Talk Labs. Akash doesn't have a CEO. It's a community-owned product. Uh, Akash is a open spot market for the globe, a uh, computing spot market. Uh, when it says community-owned, we have about 230 community contributors, and out of which 20 people are employed by Overclock. So you can see 90% of the contributors actually comes comes outside of the company, Overclock Labs. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's several workloads in Cognitive ecosystem that, you know, heavily run on Akash, Cosmos, Cosmosis. Uh, being a you know popular one, Mars Protocol just announced yesterday. So quite a lot, uh, I believe, Stargaze uh, is uh, validators. Quite of them are running on Akash as well. Uh, we're uh, you know uh, this year I, I was the most changes uh, in the Cosmos ecosystem. Really, I think can start off with coordination structures. I would say community coordination structures. Uh, we're seeing quite a lot of evolution in them. Uh, all the way from uh, just organizing around, you know, uh, important uh, initiatives like uh, shared security. We're seeing, you know, um, this it is more focused and coordinated effort in bringing something like a mesh security to market, and we're seeing experimentation with something like Babylon, where you can, you know, uh, we can modularize uh, how we look at security and we can optimize security budgets. I think that's going to be a fascinating uh, theme of the year. Uh, in Akash itself, I mean, Overclock Labs, we've, uh, you know, taken a more radical approach when it comes to uh, community organizations. I mean, later this year, uh, earlier this year, we announced that uh, we're going to open source the process that produced the code. I mean, Akash has been open source from the get-go, but the process to open source the, uh, the producer code hasn't been very, very open so far, but now... Uh, we mandated all product meetings, all the roadmap meetings, uh, every progress element of it is completely public. The right? only thing that's private is personal issues uh, at Overclock Labs, so very, very proud of that. Sure, there's a lot of experimentation in terms of how these self-organizing groups get created and whatnot, but we hope to export that the framework to the rest of the ecosystem uh, after we learn what works and what doesn't work. So, so some of the um, JIT has been quite a lot uh you know so he i uh, really like to see uh you know more community contributions there um second i think like we have a strong narratives that are being created in cosmos right so we have a strong AI narrative now with with cosmos akash uh, with gpus essentially uh gpus are the you know are the new reserve currency they say as ai is getting more uh, more adoption and, and and you know the demand for the computation services are growing to a point that the current uh, cloud infrastructure is not even able to support this uh, this demand uh, only really way to support this demand is to go places where uh, there is heavy inefficiency when it comes to resource allocation so looking at you know data centers with excess amounts of gpus that have not been able to come to the market uh, so far uh, several players in cosmos ecosystem are taking this uh, you know seriously fetch ai uh, you know akash and, and a whole bunch of others so keep an eye on this like strong ai narrative i think uh, as uh, you know the demand goes up uh, this narrative is going to get much stronger so super excited for 2023. I think, uh, you know, we're starting off right. You know, the ecosystem overall, I think, has uh, outperformed for the most part uh, when, compared, when compared to other ecosystems. And uh, I'm only looking forward to what we can do for the rest of the year. The cool. That's very exciting, Greg. I'm an avid follower of um, the unused compute power. Um, around various data centers I've been following over a couple of years now, coupled with AI, it's going to be some pretty powerful and exciting stuff. So I look forward to your further developments. Um, Shane, perhaps you'd um, also like to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about um, what you're doing at the moment. Uh, sure. Thanks for having me here, guy, uh, guys. Um, yeah, so I'm Shane. I'm kind of like the chief guide of, of Stargaze. Stargaze also doesn't have a CEO. as It's a community-owned uh, chain. 
Um, very excited about this year. There's, a, as you guys know, there's a lot of new chains and projects that are launching on Cosmos. Uh, so I'm, I'm expecting the liquidity to to increase drastically. We have uh, the DYDX and Say and a whole bunch of other uh, very exciting chains that are launching. So I think I, th I think this year, um, kind of uh, the collab collaboration of uh, of app chains is going to be important, right? We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a lot more app chains. I think uh, more kind of like soft skills like <clears throat> business development or operations become a bit more important, right? Um, 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 IBC is, is, is going to get used a lot more. We're going we're gonna to have a see, see a lot more kind of cross-chain interactions. Um, so, so that's kind of what I'm looking forward to this year. Uh, particularly for Stargaze, we are uh, looking to drastically improve our onboarding. Uh, currently, if you're an app chain, uh, the onboarding process is still not that great. You know, there's something like 12 steps or something like that to get the token uh, for uh, specific app chains. So working on onboarding, I think that's going to increase and get easier across the board. Um, and, uh, and also we are working on um, ICSM 21, which is IBC NFT transfers. Uh, so, uh, this year sometime we'll, we'll start having NFTs kind of flow out and in uh, to Stargaze and used in other use cases, uh, growing beyond just kind of like the PFP avatar model, right? Um, um, and going beyond just NFTs. Uh, we have uh, DAO integrations coming, DeFi integrations coming, uh, maybe, you know, lending and borrowing uh, across other chains and platforms. Um, so pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty exciting future. Well, I'm personally excited about what AI is going to drive in terms of NFT, right? Like, because NFT production now has gotten significantly easier. And I would like to see how DAOs use this incredible power uh, from AI to get hyper productive. You can do a lot more things with a lot less time now. Uh, so uh, the intersection of Web3 and AI is just going to be something that's going to come in, in ways that we don't predict, but that's the most exciting part of innovation, right? Yes, totally. You... Uh... Please continue, yeah, Shin. Sorry, I mean, that's okay. That's I, fine. I was just going to add there. Um, yeah, I mean, so, so, so AI has already changed uh, the way developers write code, right? So I think... Um, I don't have any hard numbers, but, you know, I, w I would say I'm, I'm I personally it's I'm, I'm maybe about 20 to 30 percent faster uh, just just using um, uh, like Copilot from GitHub. Right. And uh, is, 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 is also going to help a lot with with operations and uh, social media, like even some of the graphics we have for for social media is now generated with with AI um, in terms of collections. We have uh, collections like PS Labs that have launched AI collections on Stargaze. Um, it, it, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag, right? It also enables right. uh, a lot of kind of like low effort kind of creations. Um, so uh, kind of like uh, filtering and taste and kind of other, other factors uh, start to kind of play mm -hmm. a bigger role here. Um, but also attribution, right? I think um, we, we're going to come to a point where... Um, anyone can create content that looks like anyone else's and uh, people can also create like a lot of fake content, right? You can create, uh, you know, like a, like a video of Greg saying something that he didn't, didn't, didn't really say. And, and this is where kind of uh, identity and blockchains uh, and, and now, you know, also what you guys are working on at checked kind of becomes important here. Right. So, um, uh, you know, signing, signing data, uh, signing your content with your, you know, with your key, proving your identity, prove, you know, proving who you are, uh, that, that kind of becomes a bit more important in this AI future. Yeah, I, I totally agree. There's, there's so many debates going on at the moment around like, of what is the value of art if it's just been like auto generated and then you get on the other side of the argument, which is like, oh, it's more in the eye of the beholder um so it doesn't matter kind of where it was generated from as long as it kind of makes you feel or you yeah i guess it makes you feel something um but i think to that point like um especially when you can auto generate something using someone else's style that maybe they've created from scratch like 
it is going to become a well i personally think it's going to become important where that comes from whether it's it was generated by a certain person someone that you follow so you believe in or whether it's someone who's gone like oh gpt like generate something in the style of so and so they're gonna i think I, i'm gonna be fascinated certainly on the nft side and i mean other other artworks as well like how is the market going to treat those are they going to have the same value is one of them going to have drastically higher because it's an original it came from the first person who kind of created that style um and then i guess yeah to your point like having the veracity of of who created that but also who owned it in the future like um is it going to be like certain houses that you get where the value jumps because it was owned by a certain person who lived there who interacted with it and, and did something so i think it's going to be a fascinating space and i think all of it's going to kind of going to come together this year like um it's it's strange it, it probably wasn't the trend that we'd have all picked out last year um but it's come around so so quickly and just overtaken the space yeah and what i'm excited about is that we're all we're all building markets here right so the market is going to determine um how this will play out and it's playing out a lot faster than you know i i ever imagined but the you know the good thing is we don't have to come up with the answers or solutions because the market is going to decide it for us. Huh. Exactly. I mean, it's also not that great, right? Like if you try doing anything math, it 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 it's, it gives you wrong answers with such confidence that it actually throw you off and, and like set you on a different like path. I so, like you know I was trying to do some decay function math and it put me on like like really fancy formula that looked really legit, but then you know a way to like countless hours just trying to fix that shit so <laughs> gotta be careful like but i use gpt for everything like including emails so what i do is i write most of my stuff in markdowns on copilot now including my emails so uh, you know using copilot i'll be able to like write my blog posts like pretty much everything uh, in in all markdown just files right so um in a way gpt made me code a lot more which is nice but at the same time it's uh I mean, I, I look at this stuff as filler. Like most of the stuff you do, like in email is all filler, right? By the time you get to the real content part, it's only like maybe a few bullet points. So I think people, I think the world is going to go and recognize like most conversations are, are just fillers and let's get rid of the fillers and let's get meat to the conversation and no small talk. I think the world will be more uh, more in touch with human connection uh, than before with, with all these like filler catalysts, I would call, you know, so... I'm I'm particularly excited. I'm, I think people are going to get a lot more connected. I just uh, just want to give a really quick analogy on what you were saying around like some of it being incorrect. Um, like obviously, there's a level of expertise that like, you kind of need to know whether it's accurate or not. And the analogy was like before Christmas, it snowed in London. It was like we probably got three or four inches of snow. Um, so it's like enough to be a problem, especially in the UK where we really don't have the infrastructure for it. And loads of people were like, it, it came down inside the space of two hours. So loads of people were trying to get home from work. And uh, loads of people were just in like hatchback small cars uh, following their sat nav that was taking up the steepest road in London that hadn't been gritted or cleared. And they were just blindly following their sat nav without any context. And obviously the missing part and the missing data point in it was like, Everyone's in hatchbacks, tiny little wheels, very thin. And this was like four inches of snow, still coming down, freezing cold, trying to get up something that's like 30% gradient at the top. And they were just blindly trying to get up this thing. And you'd watch one go after another and then fall back down again. So I, I, you're right. I think there's, like, it's incredibly powerful, but you still need that, like, I think, expertise and nuance to know where it's leading you astray. Um, I think it, I really hope that your kind of prediction that brings people closer by realizing the filler is, is true. Um, Cause I think the alternative is potentially like this dangerous dystopian world where we, we never know whether we're interacting with something real. Yeah. There's some interesting insights there and that's the AIs. I mean, it's a, it's a big topic at the moment and it's definitely got a lot of people speaking and collaborating. I mean, what about you, Jeet? Um, what do you feel is going to be a big challenge? Is there anything of that um, scale that's operating on Agoric at the moment? Anything that jumps out at you? Yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> I'm going to AI for a second. Um, so before I actually worked at Agoric, I had uh, founded 
a healthcare AI company, um, basically using uh, computer vision to help uh, doctors operate more efficiently and, you know, occasionally catch, uh, let's say, like cancers and stuff that they might have missed. Um, to, to, to Greg's point, I think a lot of what AI is really, really good at now and continues to be extremely good at is eliminating a lot of these like really short attention span kind of tasks, right? Um, something that like, like anything that might take like 10, 15 seconds of just like cognitive load uh, for a human, I, I think is what AI right now is very good at doing. Um, very good at very specific pattern recognition, but like to that point, um, even when we came up with the system, um, things we had to be cognizant about is like, what are those false, po- you know, false positives, false negatives? Does this actually potentially create more um, of an inefficient system for radiologists to help diagnose uh, patients, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry for a bit of a tangent there, but like, it's all just to go back to um, a lot of these systems when combined with even what I think about what the future of blockchain looks like um, is very exciting. But like, yeah, and again, you really want to just keep an eye out on um, what the task is you're trying to solve and like what the efficiency is uh, that is gained from using AI versus not. There's... Uh, Matt, it just actually reminded me of something um, at, at, to your point on like using AI to solve small tasks or a bit like a headache that you can just like almost delegate off. One of the movements we're kind of expecting in self sovereign ID and decentralized ID is this idea of uh, like smart agents. So the idea is like if you start controlling or owning a lot of your own data, like that feasibly is a massive headache for people to own. Um, like obviously everyone will stare at their parents or their grandparents and just be like you're not in the position to be making all these decisions like you just you just don't know enough but even even those of us who are like pretty well educated pretty well like understood the boundaries of this stuff um, can like it's a headache it's a headache to constantly fill in cookie like forms on websites or like submit the same data repeatedly and all of this can kind of be offloaded so yeah, there's going to be this concept coming around probably in the next couple of years inside SSI, which is a smart agent, which kind of, as long as you set the parameters and the rules for it, it will basically manage your data on your behalf. So if you go onto a website you would, you don't want to be tracked on, it will just default to blocking everything. However, if you go onto an e-commerce site and you actually try to transact, it will suddenly start opening up and saying like, okay, what are your preferences? What are you trying to buy at the moment? And also potentially like at the point where you check out what is your, um, like your delivery address, all that kind of stuff without you needing to do anything about it. It will just get, it won't even need you to click autofill. It will just happen for you. So I think that's going to be really cool when it comes around. There's some very smart people working on it. And I, for one, can't wait to see it because the number of times I've, either had to enter something and it's wasted my time or I fat fingered it and ended up with like parcels delivered to the wrong address or like with the wrong name or the wrong details. I'd really love to get rid of that. Wow. Interesting. It sounds like if you're fat fingering that much, Frizzy, you should probably drink a little less, my friend. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I'm just conscious we've got a whole bunch (laughs) of... (laughs) <laughs> I've just got a, I'm just conscious we've got a whole bunch of questions here. Um, organic conversation is quite healthy, um, but there's a few things that, you know, a lot of community and a lot of the rest of the team were interested in knowing. So I'm just going to kind of slightly just steer us a little bit, bit back to script and find out a little bit more about what it is that you guys are, are doing in terms of your insights and what you see going forward in Cosmos for the year ahead. Um, so one of the ones um, is kind of on checked radar. My personal radar as well is um, collaboration with other Cosmos projects. So my question, or our question for you guys, rather, is are you collaborating with any of the Cosmos projects if, if, at the moment? And if so, who and why? You can feel free to mention other projects if you wish, or maybe not. It's entirely up to you. And we shall pick on Greg first, sir. Over to you. Uh, sure, we're collaborating. We have several projects. Uh, I mean, we, I believe we're, uh, we're, we're working on uh, the mesh security with uh... The Stargate folks and uh, Osmosis folks, there's a coordinated mechanism to sort of support that. Uh, there are there's a coordinated uh, mechanism to, um, I mean, we're working with Agoric as well as I mean, there's a, soon enough, Akash will be supporting uh, stable currency settlements. So, uh, one of the things we are doing is to enable IST payments. So, you'll be able to pay using an interchain uh, token instead of just using Akash to pay for hosting, so which is a big deal. 
uh, so we were collaborating with Agoric, uh, and uh, we we're collaborating with, I would say, Babylon to bring uh, bring shared security. I think that's very, very exciting. Uh, one of the uh, you know, one of the things about Cosmos, I think, this year that's not well talked about is the ability for utility chains like uh, that perform critical functions uh, in a blockchain, right? So. Babylon, for example, is uh, a shared security as a service or security as a service of some sort, right? Or BTC security as a service. So they're trying to bring Bitcoin secu security to, to um, you know, chains essentially, and then to the broader ecosystem. But what, what's exciting is it lets you be sovereign and, and, you know, selectively choose transactions that you want to secure using Bitcoin with latency being the trade-off. Right. So with, you know, with with the app chain security model in Cosmos, you can optimize for your latency and you can optimize your security budgets to respond to the latency levels or whatnot. But with sort of like with uh, something like Bab Babylon, you can say, well, I want certain transactions to be a lot more secure than other transactions. So so there's this new notion of utility chains that's coming up. And Akash is, uh, you know, a lot of us, I believe, in Stargaze is, is supporting them. Right. Babylon. So very cool new new projects that uh, we're, we're collaborating um and you know with the recent uh, you know recent drama you know for, for lack of a better word with uh, with jay kwan's like enforcement of uh, uh you know the non-compete agreements on open source projects which i think is disgusting uh you know is forcing people to think of like um you know to 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 remove all kinds of dependencies on this individual like companies like Tendermint or uh, AIB or Allinbits, right? So I think on that front, a lot of us here you know, on this call are supporting uh, Dennis or so this free Dennis moment, right? So moment, right? So it's really good to see like community come together organically, right? And and choose what's right and what's wrong, and and throw our support and on what we collectively think is right. So. A lot of collaboration happening in Cosmos, and I love that uh, about this ecosystem in general. It is indeed. It's kind of one of the big buzzwords at the minute. It's collaboration. Everybody's looking to work with everybody else. Everybody's doing something great, and it's got everybody else interested. Um, what about yourself, Ada Shane? Jeet, would any of you like to um, to take that question? Um, just as a reminder, are you collaborating with any other Cosmos projects at the moment that isn't been mentioned? Um, yeah, so um, we also are, uh, um, well, Greg already mentioned Babylon. Uh, they're, uh, we're, we're also working, mm -hmm. also working with them. Um, as you guys know, maybe Ethereum NFTs uh, have a lot of value because they uh, inherit the security of Ethereum. And, uh, you know, Stargaze as a low market cap chain, uh, working with Babylon is going to help a lot because it, 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 it brings Bitcoin security to uh, Stargaze NFTs. So very excited, uh, excited about that. And um, speaking of utility chains, uh, we're also working with <clears throat> Noise Network. So Noise, I think, I think is still kind of under the radar, maybe not well known. But what they do is uh, provide randomness as a service. So randomness, as you guys know, is very hard to do on blockchains, right? Um, if a validator or a proposer comes up with a random number, then, you know, everyone else will come up with a different random number and, uh, and, 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 then, and then consensus breaks, right? So you need this, this kind of beacon or this kind of like external source of randomness. Um, and uh, there's just so much you can do with that. And um, talking to noise over IBC and getting a source of randomness just opens the door to just lots of uh, things you can do in the design space. So um, in terms of NFTs, we can do kind of fun stuff like have raffles and like pick a random winner. Um, <clears throat> in terms of consensus, you can do interesting things like, uh, uh, you know, pick a random validator to propose a block instead of uh, having a deterministic algo for that. Um, so, so kind of uh, excited to see what will come out of that. Um, let me see. We're also talking to Composable Finance. They're working on a, uh, a Cosmobosm chain in um, <clears throat> the Polkadot ecosystem. So kind of looking to connect to that. Um, also working with Axlar uh, um, to be able to bridge um, NFTs from other ecosystems uh, to Stargaze and back and forth. And I'm sure there's a couple, a bunch more that I missed, but uh, those are some of the bigger ones that I'm, that I'm excited about. Well, it sounds like everybody's got their fingers in a lot of pies. What about yourself, Jade? 
Yeah, um, as, and thanks for the shout out, Greg. Um, as Greg mentioned, um, we're doing some really cool stuff with them, and hopefully, uh, beyond IC for settlements, we'll be doing some more exciting stuff with uh, interchain accounts as well. Um, uh, as Shane mentioned as well, working with Axelar for uh, Axel USDC to get that over um, to Mint IST, which is a huge deal for us, obviously. Um, working with Osmosis as well as Crescent. Um, and then we have a ton of stuff in the pipeline. Um, we have a lot of really exciting things to announce uh, this year. I think this is definitely going to be one of those watershed years for just a lot of collaboration across all of Cosmos. And um, I would imagine almost all of us on this call are working with been talking to a variety of different projects across the ecosystem. And uh, yeah, it'll just be really exciting to see what uh, comes out this next year. Cool. Well, I wish you the best of luck with those announcements. Um, Fraser, um, is there anything that uh, we would like to share with our listeners and uh, fellow panel? Yeah, I, th I think there's probably two sides to it. One is like where we're using other people's utilities. So um, and the other side is where we're about to be offering something that should be cosmos wide in, in probably the next couple of months. So the first one is like we're now hell bent on like doing um, like payments for SSI, and that means we so payments and commercial models for SSI, which means that we need a mix of like smart contracts, privacy in different places, um, as well as like encryption and all, all this kind of jazz. So we're starting to do that kind of assessment of like what are we going to use how like is it a combination of a bunch of like different sovereign chains to go and build all of this composably up together um so there's there's that area where that's very much going to be like potentially working with the likes of um like agoric and co to like implement that utility and then the flip side is something that we've been kind of thinking and thinking about for a long time um which is providing some kind of form of decentralized reputation um, and like ideally taking out a lot of like the scamming um, like fraud that goes on less maybe less so in co like cosmos where it can be quite tight net but just like in general um, as well as like providing loads of other utilities like into communities the ability for people to prove themselves and generally just build up trust and the idea is that um, like we'll kick it off, but it should be pretty open so that anyone else in the ecosystem can can go and use it. And um, I think Toby, I had a partnership is probably on the call somewhere as well. And basically our plan is to start reaching out to kind of uh, lease the projects on this call and a load of others to start understanding how like how this could be used, how we might tailor it to make it work out. So yeah, I'd say there's two sides. There's like elements where we're looking to other chains um, to go and yeah, other chains to go and like build that utility up that we that we need for our core offering, um, and then a separate separately something where not just on the like the network side where people can hold like right dids, cred def schemas, revocation kind of stuff, but offer something that should be like a, a at least at the very least a cosmos wide utility if not further. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun few months. And like Jeet was saying, like lots in the pipeline to talk about over this year so it's uh it's gonna be a fun one it is indeed i'm really excited for the rest of the cosmos space to find out the surprise that we've got ready for them um but i guess they'll just have to wait um, I guess I, what I want to do is um, I'm conscious of time at the moment and we haven't really taken any questions from the community. Um, I'd just like to remind you all, if you do have any questions um, for any of the panel, um, you can ask them either on Twitter, Telegram, um, or if you'd like to take the mic, if you have any questions now, um, take a moment. And would anybody like to take the microphone and ask any questions of our, our panel? I'm not seeing any. Another five seconds. Okay, no problem. I guess we'll move on. Let's find out what else we've got. We've got a whole bunch of these questions here that are just not going to get answered. Um, but I've got a great one here. Um, I think it fits in nicely. There's a lot of talk regarding DevRel activities um, in 2023, and it's certainly been a hot topic for ourselves and Checked. 
Um, and we've talked a lot about collaboration and working together with other projects. But in terms of DevRel activities, um, what have your thoughts been specifically on that when you've been working um, with other teams? And do you have anything planned for this uh cheat so i'm going to pick on you first this time sure um and uh just because you know we're we're using our um we're using hardened javascript right um so we're we're a bit different than probably many of the other teams uh within cosmos that are um using cosmosm um yeah so a, a big part of what we're trying to do is just really get out there um to different uh hackathons just just getting around a lot of developers to get a better understanding of you know what are their needs? What are their What are they looking to get out of um, tooling? Um, you know why certain blockchains over others. Um, just trying to get a better sense of what developers want, and then beyond that, you know we're just going to try to engage people as much as possible through uh, like different hackathon activities later this year, um, creating more developer resources. And you know, let's say um, a, a lot of what we're focusing on is the composability of our smart contracts. So having even like example smart contracts of a page of components, for example, um, something to point developers to for uh, them to easily grab a few primitives and just be able to really utilize the power of blockchain. Cool. Well, thanks for sharing your insights. What about yourself, Greg? I see you've just uh, unmuted yourself. Go for it. Yeah, so I'm doing a lot more on the ground dev realm myself, personally. Like, I still write code. So I... Um, and because there is... A like for Akash Network, there's, there's been a huge focus on AI uh, just because the nature and, and the value prop we, we offer in terms of like low cost, high end GPUs. So a big uh, just observation from my personal experience is it's very, very hard to export Web3 uh, development, uh, non-custodial, like permissionless development mode to Web2. It's very, very hard especially from a DevRel standpoint, right? So like if I go to a AI yeah, hackathon, for example, what people want in terms of like product set, uh, they just want to pay using a credit card. And we talk about blockchains, they talk about environment. So that's the kind of crowd, you know, you know we're going after, right? So it's, um, and we feel like this is, this year, 2023, we got to deliver. Like, you know, so far the bull markets and all the market cycles has been like, you know, if you think about historically, first cycle was white paper, second cycle was DeFi's and product market fits, and now third cycle is like, who can actually deliver the promise of crypto? Because now we have this competitive sort of like, you know, emerging market, which is AI, which is delivering, you know, value very, very well. If you think about chat GPT has five a million users in five days and 100 million users in like, you know, 30 days, right? So they're doing a really good job at like onboarding users. Uh, so... A big challenge for us this year from a DevRel standpoint is how do you onboard a uh, a user group uh, that don't uh, have any idea on how to develop in a non-custodial way? So it's very, very challenging. Uh, and we're working on different solutions that can you know, essentially deliver the value without compromising the core decentralization principles of it. Uh, it's a lot easier to onboard a, a Web3 dev uh, because they're more familiar with, uh, with, the, with the nature of the system. Uh, but even Web2, 3 devs, we find it pretty hard to, for them to convert from Web2 tooling, right? Like a lot of them use uh, Netlify or uh, Vercel, which is really good from a user experience standpoint. Uh, and for them to use something like Akash, you know, you have to compromise, right? And, and the, a lot of the compromise comes from comfort comfort in in custody right so so it's 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 when we talk to like top tier to devs and they understand custody they have like a custody management framework that they 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 took years to get you know good at are easy to onboard versus someone that is brand new to self custody uh, or not, not even brand new that hasn't done work uh, i believe from like a developer automation standpoint on how do you manage self custody systems right and uh, I think the challenge really, really the the amazing world, you know, where I consider success is if we can have a really good self-custody uh, workflow for developers that can be exported to the users. Uh, and, you know, because once we cross that custody barrier, the experience is incredible, right? Like using Web3 is just amazing because you don't have to... It's all composable. It's like all driven by a token. It's very clean. It's very asynchronous. It's really good sort of like user experience once you cross the custody barrier. 
so yeah, that's what we're seeing from a market standpoint. And um, you know, uh, in, and I'm hyper focused on in delivering the user experience this year. Cool. Thanks very much for the uh, for the insights, Greg. Um, Fraser, um, what are your thoughts on DevRel at the moment? Really well. Um, I think one we've got loads of plans for it this year because I think um, a little bit similar to what Greg was saying. Like we've we've been we're very much at the infrastructure layer. Um, like we're not as far down as where Greg is, but like we're very much infrastructure. Um, and we basically have been working our way, like we've got most of the functionality on the network or like we've certainly got it on there from an identity perspective and we need to do the payment side of things. But then all the work recently has been surfacing that up where, through software development kits, like multiple. So getting into things like Veramo, uh, Aries Framework, JavaScript, and a bunch of like, other SSI toolkits. Um, I think our next, well, our next step is, is a couple of things. So there's like still developing out the payment side of things, which is going to be completely novel and new. Um, but the other bit is is kind of that that dev journey. So like it's getting it into more SDKs, so we have more availability. People can just use what they've been used to and just carry on. Um, but the other part is actually like moving even further up the stack and turning these things into services. So wherever possible, like can we turn some of these into APIs where people could just call them without really caring? And therefore, like, because they're comfortable, like pretty much any dev in the world is going to be comfortable with using, with using kind of REST APIs. Like if we can get it up to that level, then suddenly the number of people that we can take on who can develop that way is super, super high. Um, a little bit like um, to, to use Agoric as an analogy, like because like Agoric is doing JavaScript and like 85% of the world's devs are JavaScript, like the onboarding pipeline for Agoric is incredibly high. And I think what we're looking to do on the, on the check that side is shift the barrier, which is like quite high for SSI development because it's, it's historically like technically complex and just move the layers up. So it's suddenly so, so much easier. And then kind of following that up with, with the other, the other parts that we said, which is like, uh, also, the other parts are kind of Greg and, and G touched on, which is like getting to hackathon, showing this off, showing how easy it is, um, and also providing, like I kind of mentioned that like Cosmos wide utility. One of the nice things there is potentially it will provide a bit of a template for people to experiment without having to do like low level SSI development. So it'll be a bit of a sandbox where people can like start knocking credentials out, sending them to people, seeing what they, what works and what doesn't, combining them in novel ways and then just ditching them if they don't work and moving to, onto something else. So yeah, I think it's, it's, it's going to be a mix. It's like getting more functionality in, getting more availability and lowering the barrier to entry and then, yeah, it's like hackathons and pure DevRel where it's just showing off what we can do. Um, yeah, so it's it's going to be a busy year for, for Ross and Toby and Alex and all the devs of our team. I see Tassos in the call as well. So, yeah, <laughs> they've, got some, they've got some work to go. I'm sure they'll get through it, though. What about yourself, Shane? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, sure. So I think um, a lot of us here have been following the, the Canto uh, hype. And um, one of their biggest value propositions is they have this like developer shared um, kind of share of the feeds that flow through all their smart smart contracts. Um, so uh, St uh, Stargy has actually uh, um, had this since uh, March of last year, where uh, if you're an ecosystem developer and you launch a, a contract on Stargaze, uh, ten percent of all fees uh, went to the developer. Um, so we're we're um, submitting a proposal very soon to actually increase that to fifty percent. So then um, uh, half half the fees of that uh, third party contracts will will go to devs. Um, so so that's that's something we're working on to uh, to attract more devs. And um, also we kind of uh, have to work on changing the narrative uh about permission chains and i don't even like the word permissioned you know it should be more like governance gated or community owned because permissioned uh at least uh, in the context of ethereum to a lot of people mean that oh the entire chain is like gated by four or five people or something like that but it's really not right uh in 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 the context of cosmos permission means the entire community votes 
right? The entire community votes on uh, uh, which which contracts are uploaded to, to the chain. Um, uh, so so I think I think it, there's there's a little bit of, of like an education uh, kind of uh, barrier there, and uh, and and I think what we are, are going to try and do is maybe highlight some of the um, ecosystem projects that are built on Stargaze, maybe help them a little bit with kind of UI UX. Um, and uh, I guess we've been lucky because as a Cosmosm chain, we, we really haven't had too much of a shortage of, 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 of devs that are, that are building on Stargaze. Actually, we, we were kind of running into a problem where multiple teams are like building the same thing on top. Um, so yeah, going, going forward, we kind of want to focus maybe having fewer quality devs build uh, build on Stargaze as opposed to kind of a lot of uh, a lot of competing teams and um, also work on the work on the education kind of kind of problem there. Hi, apologies. It went silent again for me there. Um, I don't know if you can guys can hear me and somebody. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Apologies. Okay. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> sorry about that, Shane. Apologies for the silence. This is the phone. Um, Jeet, what about yourselves? With just as a reminder of the question, um, we're discussing DevRel activities in 23. Interested in your thoughts and um, what you can share what your team has planned on this? Yeah. Oh, I think I, I believe I went first on this question. Um... Oh, did you? Apologies. Um, oh, no worries, Ivan. Right. Okay. Well, I guess we'll um, move on to the next. I'm just keeping an eye on the uh, time. Okay. A lot of talk um, around what happened last year. Obviously, there were some major events that happened last year in 22. I guess um, we can we can be happy about you know what we're looking to achieve going forward. It sounds like everybody's got the fingers in a lot of pies with some great announcements to come forward. But looking back over last year. What was your biggest achievement? What was the biggest milestone achievement for the work that you guys were doing that will catapult you forward in 23? Um, we'll go with Shane. Oh, uh, man, it's really hard to just pick one. Uh, last year was just, uh, <laughs> I mean, we, we just did so many things last year. I, I mean, I, mean I, 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 guess the, I guess the highlight is, is, uh, is launching the marketplace. Um, kind of that really kind of kick, kick, kick things off. Um, but also, also, I guess one thing, one thing we're kind of proud of is, is the community that, that Stargaze has, right? So, um, Cosmos is, 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 uh, you know, unfortunately kind of earned a reputation with a lot of infighting and, and politics and stuff like that. And, uh, and a lot of drama, um, um, Stargaze has been very lucky to be like relatively drama free and, 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 uh, you know, the community is just very welcoming and friendly. Uh, um, I mean, obviously there are exceptions, and and when tokens are involved, when the community involved, obviously there's going to, there, there's going to be exceptions. But uh, but um, yeah, I think I think I think that is something that I'm kind of proud of that we did last year. Is um, you know we did this large airdrop, and because of the airdrop, all these new people kind of uh, uh, you know flooded into Stargaze. But it also kind of had this like filtering um, kind of aspect of it where. Um, some some people just you know came just dumped a token and left, but 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 the community of that that remained from that just kind of uh, you know became kind of like the bedrock of Stargaze. So um, I guess uh, you know uh, kind of acquiring that community was maybe kind of like the biggest milestone of um, that 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 Stargaze had had last year. That sounds awesome. Thanks very much for sharing that. Um, I'm just conscious that some people might have a little bit of a hard stop. So, Greg, um, I'm going to um, ask you, if you don't mind, um, what was your biggest milestone achievement for 22? Well, I got to resonate with Shane here. Um, keeping the community that matters, I think, is the biggest achievement of uh, 2020. Besides all the roadmap stuff we did, right? Like we did. You know, we launched persistent storage. We want we launched IP marketplace, but a lot of the work we put uh, in 2022 was not visible till like the first of the first month of the year because this month we hit four major milestones. I would say the first one was obviously to go radically open. Uh, we removed the risk of you know a single company like Overclock Labs having a lot of influence on the Akash network, right? So uh, with 
by going radically open, we have 90% of contributors come from outside of Akash. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, outside of Overclock Labs, which is a big achievement uh, in in uh, in itself from organizational structure and from a risk uh, you know management structure for Akash Network. Right. Second thing we introduced was the Akash Economics. Of course, we've been working on it for months. Right. Uh, of last year, we put a proposal out there that introduces novel mechanisms in terms of using stable payments, uh, in terms of uh, looking at security budget optimization by, you know, considering something like, you know, uh, Babylon or uh, mesh security or whatnot. Uh, and it also has, you know, some of the really cool stuff on how do you uh, continue uh, funding public goods and whatnot. So I'm super excited for that. Uh, third thing is we actually open source our uh, web UI. We, we don't talk much about it, but uh, we went open source first before GA. So that tells you how we think of products and how we like to approach the market where there is you know, a lot of discussion, surprisingly, about whether you know Web3 or, or crypto should be open or closed, So which is horrible. But we believe, obviously, things... When you have public utilities, they should be open, and open source is a foundation for decentralization. So we went open source first. So we achieved, we um, we announced that, and uh, another um, I would say like I think those three are like major. And of course, the fourth thing we did was introduce Akash uh, AI, right? So the I'm going to go too much into it, but I mean you shouldn't be surprised because we've been working on AI for three years, right? Like we've been very vocal about it. We've been very vocal about GPUs. We've been very vocal about the road. GPUs has been on roadmap for like several years and people look back and say, oh, Akash is pivoting to AI. No, we're not pivoting. Something we've been working on for a long, long, long time. Now we are formalizing a product uh, with a more streamlined approach when it comes to messaging and and, and user experience and whatnot. So, uh, so that's the fourth milestone we got. So all this has been the work we've been putting together for a long time. Uh, they're just coming to fruition and more, uh, and the message is getting a lot more clear. So... Um, very, very proud of, of our achievements so far. Excellent. Thanks very much for sharing all that. Sounds like you've um, made some great steps forward. Um, Jade or Fraser, would one of you like to go next? I'm just conscious of time, so if anybody needs to make a hard stop. Um... Yeah, I do have to drop off. Uh, I have something else, but this was wonderful. Thank you so much for having me here. No problem. Well, thanks very much for um, joining. If any of you have any other hard stops, um, you could uh, just let us know. Otherwise, if we've got any other community questions. Um, so is it Greg and G, are you dropping off? Shane, I don't know if you're sticking around or if you uh, need oh, to drop off. I, I can I can stick around and definitely answer this at least. And if any other questions arise. Um, yeah, so, so for us, um, kind of like two things uh, from last year that are, you know, huge, uh, huge milestones for Gorik. Uh, one would be basically the simultaneous like launch of our first mainnet slash inner protocol. Um, so yeah, right. Um, inner protocol, um, uh, use the PSM, the parity stability module, which allowed users to use, uh, both USDC and, and USDT to met IST. And now IST is currently the largest stable token within the Cosmos ecosystem. So I'm really excited to see what could happen with, um, what we're hoping to be, you know, Cosmos, uh, DeFi summer. Uh, and then myself on the partnerships team, especially, I'm uh, really proud of um, the fact that we've gotten uh, five really good, um, basically, uh, mainnet partners that we'll, we'll be launching on our second mainnet, which will be uh, a whitelisted mainnet. Um, and it includes uh, Creed, which is an NFT platform, um, LH2 staking, which brings liquid staking to Agoric and incentivizes the decentralization of the validators, uh, Crabble, which is an NFT lending platform, um, agree we, which allows for really easy and quick, um, basically agreements between different individuals. Um, and finally Calypso, which is an IBC enabled, uh, DeFi portfolio manager, um, which will allow, as I was mentioning with, uh, Cosmos DeFi summer, will allow a lot of different activities across the interchain. Um, so yeah, those are definitely the, uh, the, the highlights for me from last year. Awesome. Thanks very much. Um, thank you very much for attending, guys.